all the um, teachers on the English side um, on curriculum and making sure that we are um, providing best practices. Christy, that's where we are in the agenda. If you want to week, you let people know what's coming up next. Should we need to have one? Hey guys, um, my uh, name is Daniel. Good job, Daniel Lauscher. Je m'appelle Madame Danielle. Me llamo Señora Daniel. Yo soy la coordinadora de la escuela. And so I work on lower campus and upper campus, like Lisa, um, anything that has to do with language curriculum, that would be me. Any questions that you have about language, um, I'm your person. Thank you, Sandra. A reminder, if everyone can please mute themselves. Yes, I am aware that the host can mute everyone, but we're trying to allow our administrators to remain unmuted. So if you've just joined us, if you can please mute your microphone. Christy, did we lose you again? No, I'm here. Okay, great. Do you want to continue with uh, the agenda? <laughs> yes. Are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we have done introductions, so we are going to move on to the next. We got everybody, right? Yes, we yes. got everybody. Any um, teachers? Did we get teachers too? We did not introduce any teachers yet. Um, yeah, I think we have some teachers from fourth and fifth grade. If they want to just unmute yourself and introduce yourself really quick and show your beautiful face. Okay, hi. Um, this is Ms. Ekman, and I am your fourth grade Mandarin teacher. Anyone else out there? I thought I saw a couple of people. Hello. I'm uh, Dean Coppolino. Uh, I'm a TA with fourth grade. Specifically, I work with Bash Eaglin one-on-one um, -on -one, um, for physical assistance, but I'm also a TA with the rest of the fourth grade class as well. Uh, fourth, excuse me, fourth grade Spanish track. Hi, I'm Stephanie Lalonde. I'm a fifth grade teacher in French. But it says it's me. Wait, Dad, stop. Daddy, stop. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. I want to remind everybody that tomorrow we have a, uh, not tomorrow, next Monday we'll have orientation. Um, we are looking forward to having you here um, with us. We, um, Normally, you know, on orientation, you come to the school building, you walk down the hallway, you get to see um, your teacher drop off stuff, fill out forms, all that. But we have really tried hard to make that virtual. Um, we're not sure. Um, it won't be exactly the same, but we're going to get a tr try to get it as close to um, possible that we can so that um, you will feel like you've had a good experience on Monday and getting to meet your teachers and go see the counselors if you want to, go see your connections teachers. So we're, we're, we're making it all there. So look forward um, for an email early that morning and it'll also be on our website, how to navigate um, orientation. So we're looking forward to that. Our parent digital handbook came out and between that and our time here today, we really hope that we can get all your questions answered. There will be a time at the end that we will have a chance for you to put some um, questions in the chat box and we will take those and we'll make a FAQ document that we can send back out to you guys. Um, so we'll do that at the end. Um, communication, please um, know that your teachers will be communicating with you weekly. Um, just like we would if we were face to face, but also the weekly reminders. It is super important that you um, keep up with the weekly reminders and all that information is going to be in there. So make sure if for some reason you are not getting those emails, please let um, someone at the school know so we can make sure you're on that list. That is really important because that's going to have key details in it. Um, device and materials pickup is Wednesday and Thursday. Um, nine to two both days. Um, we'll have those devices there ready to go. Um, 
please make sure, this is important, one adult that can come in and get that. We're asking students um, to wait outside if you do bring them. Um, but in, if you don't have to bring them, that'd be even better so you can just get what you need. Um, I do want to say something about supplies. I know that it's been kind of trying to figure out what supplies you need at home. And I know this is a tough time for some people as well. We will have some materials ready for pickup for those that um, need materials on an as needed basis. So please know that there will be different materials there for you to pick up if you are um, in need of those. So I didn't want anybody to worry about that. All right, so we're gonna move on to the, the next slide. And that will be Zakia. So Zakia, I'm gonna let you take over from here. All right, thanks, Christy. All right, as I mentioned before, my name is Zakia Funches and I'm the data coordinator here at GLOBE. I'm going to talk to you a little bit this evening about assessments, what assessments we do, we use here at GLOBE, as well as what we do with the data that we collect from those assessments. So we'll first start with MAP. MAP stands for Measures of Academic Progress. It's an online adaptive assessment that is administered three times a year, fall, winter, and spring. Uh, your fourth and fifth graders will be assessed in reading, math, as well as language usage. Fontes and Pinnell is a benchmark assessment, and it's a tool used to identify the instructional and independent reading levels of each student. Um, FMPs are also assessed three times a year, fall, winter, and spring, um, both in English as well as the target language. The Georgia Milestones Assessment System is a statewide comprehensive test administered in grades three through high school. GMAS measures how well students have learned their co common core standards for that grade level. Tests are given in English language arts, math, science, and social studies. Georgia Milestones is administered in the spring of each academic school year. Teachers also use various formative and summative assessments. Um, these could look like exit tickets, published writing, pre and post tests, and your common quizzes and tests that teachers use um, on a weekly or daily basis. Okay. How teachers use this data. Myself, along with the curriculum and language coordinators, we meet with um, teachers often, usually weekly, um, to talk about the data that we pulled or collected from these various assessments. Um, the data teachers get from these assessments are used to drive their instructional decisions. Um, it's, this data is used for planning. Oftentimes they ask themselves, what instructional teaching strategies will work best given where my students are performing? Do I need to reteach a prerequisite skill before introducing an upcoming unit? They also use this data for grouping students. Which students can I partner together as language partners? Who can I group together for book clubs? We also use this data um, to determine what student needs additional support. Who needs extra support layered on the top of the core curriculum? And that extra support can be as an extension or as remediation. Okay, um, I will be available during orientation. I will have open office hours um, via Google Meet. So if you have any further questions for me, feel free to pop in. Um, for, on orientation day, Monday. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. I am Lisa Dibble, and I am the curriculum coordinator, and I just wanted to talk with you for just a few minutes about the English curriculum. Um, I, we've already started, I've already been working with the teachers, the fourth and fifth grade teachers, and I wanted to say that um, for those of you coming up to Upper Campus, um, you're in for a real treat, and our, both our fourth and fifth grade teams are outstanding. Um, I wanted to assure you that what we're going to be doing online is very similar, exactly the same as much as possible as what they would be getting in the classroom. We will still be using Teachers College Reading and Writing, writing Units of Study. We will still be using Engage New York or Eureka Math. Um, so we're basically um, just taking our um, best teaching practices that we already know work in the classroom and we're just making them 
work virtually. So morning meetings, you'll still have a morning meeting every morning to start with. Um, they're gonna be recorded lessons by teachers with what we used to be, what your child may know as the mini lesson, um, is like the recorded lesson where we're gonna introduce the skill. Um, they're gonna be small groups where kids can meet with the teacher and talk about what the skills are, how they're doing, and the teacher can check for understanding. This will be both in math and reading. Um, the students are still going to have independent reading choice and they're still going to have book clubs where they break out into small rooms and meet with three or four other students and the teacher kind of pops around in between. Um, and they're still going to have writing feedback where the teacher looks at their writing and peers look at their writing and they have a chance to kind of conference with teachers and peers on how they can improve their writing. And I will also be around on orientation if you have any other questions about the English curriculum. Hi everyone, I'm Sandra Daniel. I'm our language coordinator at the school. Um, what I want to assure you guys of is distance learning is globe learning. Our assurance policies have not changed. Um, our teachers will still be providing 100% target language to students. You know, we still guarantee that we have that 50-50 model. So English teachers will still be teaching in English and language teachers will still be teaching in language. Um, and at this point, students know the expectation of using the target language in class. So what that looks like in fourth and fifth grade, we, the kids are already at that intermediate level. They're able to communicate with each other conversationally. They're able to speak in past tense. They're able to use circumlocution to talk about pretty much anything um, that they would like to. So this opens up a plethora of possibilities in these grade levels. Um, we have one-to-one -one Chromebooks, the kids, have their own device, they take it home. The teachers are walking them through the first six weeks of school, making sure that they know what the expectation is. Um, and we're getting a lot of new activities that we can do with the kids. So we're looking at discussions. We're looking at listening to podcasts, our close reading, discussing, discussing those in small groups. You know, the students are able to use their asynchronous time and then come in and synchronously talk with the teacher and discuss in small groups. This is something that's really unique at this age. So um, I just kind of put a couple of pictures in there of some of the things that teachers have done before. You know, showing your work, teaching the students how to take a picture of your work. Uh, Senora Marin did that so that kids could actively go through her lesson with her and they could post, you know, how they solved the equation. So each, you know, person could write out on their, their whiteboards and see. On the bottom, you can see some of the discussion questions that small groups were working on in Mandarin. And then on the left, students are taking an assessment in the language through Kahoot. So there's a lot of fun research and exploration that can be done online. A lot, of, a lot of collaborative tasks now that the students are conversational, are using the, the language fluidly. And then there's a lot of metacognitive reflection that can be done about the lesson, you know, what students can take out of it, exits and um, journaling that can be done. If you guys have any questions about anything coming up, I will also be having office hours um, on orientation day. Awesome, thank you. Um, all right, I'm gonna turn it over to Judy and Marsha and let them um, take you on the way for Upper Campus. Thank you so much, Christy. Um, and welcome to Upper Campus, especially for those of you that have fourth graders coming up from Lower Campus or also new to GLOBE. We are super excited to have you at Upper Campus this year. Um, and typically we would have had a step up day or a walkthrough opportunity for students to come to school and meet their teachers and see campus. We know that the move to upper campus can be intimidating for some people, 
Obviously, in the digital environment, that is a little bit more prohibitive. But rest assured that when we reach the point where we are able to bring students back into the school building safely, we will make a plan for our new friends to come see the building so that they don't show up on the first day and not know where to go. That's really important to us. Um, something that I realized today is that in our new digital environment, um, we are relying on tools that we have not previously been reliant upon. So where many of you in your K through three circumstances came to school on open house day and read a sign on the wall to learn who your homeroom teacher was and then went and met your teacher and your partner teacher and never ever looked in Infinite Campus. Um, now we are relying on Infinite Campus for information because it's there and we can find it there and we're not face to face. Um, and so I received a lot of questions today as schedules became live in Infinite Campus um, about homeroom teachers and support teachers and things like that. So rest assured that every single student in our K through five program, and that includes our fourth and fifth graders, have a homeroom teacher and a partner teacher. So, but your schedule is only going to show a homeroom teacher. So don't be afraid that if you only have the English teacher on your language team, that that means you don't have a language teacher or vice versa. Um, the way that Infinite Campus is set up, we can only give them one teacher or the other in the program, but they still receive all of their instruction from both. If you have never accessed Infinite Campus, um, fourth and fifth grade parents don't really need it. We don't do grades or anything in there for this age. Um, but if you are interested in accessing it, please reach out to Tamika Walker-Jones, our registrar, and she can give you login information. The other thing that I would like to talk about at Upper Campus is our Upper Campus Villages. It was really important to us when we opened our Upper Campus that our students have an opportunity to create community that was not just within their grade level or their language track. Um, and as our upper campus has grown, our villages have grown to really serve a social emotional need that the classroom environment doesn't always serve. So we created these villages and we utilize them for a lot of different reasons. Unfortunately, in the digital environment, it's a little bit more of a challenge to have our village meetings be meaningful, but we are actually meeting with our upper campus staff tomorrow to discuss how we will execute villages in a distance learning environment. In the meantime, know that your fourth graders have been assigned to teams and that when we get back to being in campus, they will get their village t-shirts and we will go back to meeting in person. We just don't know quite yet what the format will look like while we are um, in a digital environment. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Uh, this is a week in the life of distance learning for fourth and fifth grade. Um, synchronous classes will be held on Tuesdays and Fridays. And all of this information is in the parent handbook that you received. So you don't have to worry about writing it down now or any of that kind of thing. Um, we will have, they will be either with their English teacher or their language teacher on Tuesday or Friday from nine to 11 and one to three. On Mondays, they will have their synchronous connections classes. Um, fifth grade at 8.10 and fourth grade at 9.10. And then on Thursday, that will flip. Fifth, fifth grade will be at 8.10 and fourth at 9.10. That'll also be a time uh, that they will have book clubs and small groups uh, and um, the teacher will schedule that. Every week there will be a, uh, a plan for the week of what lessons kids are going to be in on those asynchronous days. On Wednesdays, that will be an independent day, work day for students. Teachers will assign work that they can work on independently. Uh, teachers will be in meetings and uh, in planning. And so that will be a completely off day in terms of our digital learning, except for the independent work that students will be doing. Okay. Excellent, thank you, Marsha. 
Um, all right, so the details of what the distance learning environment will look like. Most importantly, our students will be doing all of their work on Google Classroom. And I'm gonna see if I can make this work, but this, oh look, I can. This is the icon for Google Classroom. Um, so that's what they're gonna be looking for, is the Google Classroom. That's how they're gonna connect to each teacher. Um, teachers will be sending out links to join their Google Classrooms. Um, they will also be in your welcome letters that you will be receiving this Friday. There will be a Google Classroom for your English teacher, there will be a Google Classroom for your language teacher, and there will be a Google Classroom for each of the six connections classes that your child is enrolled in. These Google Classrooms will have a consistent mode of presentation in some areas. Um, for example, we have asked the teachers to all have a section that is about how to access digital learning that will give you codes and links and things that your child will need. We have also asked that all of our teachers utilize the period of time over the first six weeks of school, approximately, to merge academic learning with community building and social emotional development. Um, one of the primary differences that we see starting the school year in the digital environment versus ending the school year in the digital environment is that we have to create norms for our students before we can move forward into an academic environment. Um, someone asked in the chat box about online shenanigans with our kids. And this is what the teachers will be addressing at the beginning of the school year. They'll be teaching the kids how you log in, what I expect of your behavior while you're there, um, and how we're going to address behavior and behavioral contracts. So those things will happen the same way they would as if we were in school for real. We're just gonna be school in school on a screen instead. All of the classes will be held on Google Meet. So this icon here is the Google Meet icon. Teachers will give students two different ways to get to Google Meet, but it will be very clear in their Google Classroom which way they are supposed to use. One way will be a link, very similar to what many of you have seen and will see with our orientation day. Um, and occasionally they will get a code. They are the same types of Google Meet, it just allows different access for the students and the teachers. So that is why we use them in both ways. We have also asked that all of our teachers post um, the schedule for the upcoming week on Friday afternoons so that you can know what's coming. Marsha was just talking about how Mondays and Thursdays will not be exactly the same every single week because it will be dependent on what the teacher has planned for the class. But you will know on Friday afternoon what is coming up so that you and your child can plan accordingly. Christy, go ahead. You want to do email? Okay. Um, we will be taking attendance every day, and uh, students are expected to to be there. Uh, it the attendance will be in live classes. Uh, sometimes attendance will be taken by, based on responses in Google Classroom on a, asynchronous days. Um, if your child is going to be absent, you no longer have to contact the front office. You just let the teacher know and, uh, and so that they can then go in and, and do whatever makeup. Um, we we want to encourage students to look for assignment due dates. Uh, the Friday agenda that will be coming out for the next week will include the standards that will be addressed that week. And our first reporting period ends in mid-October. Um, students will have independent work on Wednesdays, on conference days, and other scheduled virtual learning days. Students will be in class from 8 to 3 or thereabouts uh, every day for some period of time. It may be a check-in with the teacher for a few minutes and then they go off and work on their own. Um, it could be working in a small group or with a, um, with a book club. Um, we want to make sure that students are on time for class and that they're dressed and ready to work. And uh, this is uh, so that we can help students get in the mindset of this is school and we, we, it, it all is going to count. All right. Student support. Ideally, students should be able to complete their work independently. Um, we recognize that 
not every student has that capacity and some will need more support than others. Your first line of defense is to reach out to your teachers and your TAs. Um, teachers will be holding office hours. They will also provide instructions explicitly for students about how to get support, whether they're supposed to put a comment in their Google Classroom or whether they're supposed to email or whether they're supposed to come to office hours. That will be very clearly communicated. There will also be office hours for grade level TAs. So we have a fourth grade grade level TA and we have a fifth grade grade level TA um, and they will also be accessible. If your student is struggling, please start with these contacts for assistance. That should be your first line of defense. There were some questions that were posed regarding student supports. So if you look at our little graph paper over here to the right, I want to address those. In fourth and fifth grade, students who are struggling in reading or math and have been identified as needing additional support may be receiving support under our Early Intervention Program, or EIP. Um, if this is following you from a previous year, then you were probably already aware of this support. If you are looking at your student's infinite campus schedule, that course will have a dot one next to it, and that's how you know that it is an EIP support class. Um, students that have IEPs, or are serviced by our special education department, will be serviced in the manner that reflects their IEP. So if they are supposed to be in a collaborative model where the teacher comes into the classroom, then they will be in a collaborative model. And if they are supposed to be in a pullout or resource model, then that is what they will get. The special education teachers will also be available for office hours and one-on-one -on -one consultation to support students. Gifted at Globe is not a pullout or standalone class, but rather a collaborative effort between Jana Burrow, our gifted liaison, and our teachers. Um, Jana will be working with teachers directly to support students who need enrichment. The beauty of that model, of course, is that we do not have to have students be officially labeled as gifted. If they are demonstrating a need for enrichment, we can give it to them. And if they are demonstrating a need for support, we can help them. Finally, if you have students that receive ESOL support or English language support, they will be working with Mr. Javan Bukaya, and he will be scheduling independent office hours with them that will not conflict with their regular classes. If your child is struggling with anxiety or social emotional needs in the digital learning environment, I'm getting some feedback. Can you make sure you're muted, please? Thank you. Um, if your child is struggling with anxiety or social emotional needs in the digital environment or work overload and having trouble with executive functioning, you are encouraged to reach out to your counselor. The counselor for fourth and fifth grade is Scott Lawrence. He can be reached via email. You will have the opportunity to meet him on orientation day, and he will also be holding his own office hours for students. If you have medical concerns, you are encouraged to reach out to our nurse, Sherry Robinson. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course, Marsha and I are always available. You can reach us by email, and we are happy to set up appointments to meet with you in the digital environment to allay your concerns or address any needs that you may have. Okay, as, 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 it, as it is when we are live uh, and in person, uh, communication and feedback is a very, very important part of our partnership with you to help your child. Um, one of the, some of the things that you can do as a parent is help your child to read instructions carefully and check their work before submitting. Uh, communicate as soon as you see a problem brewing, not after it becomes insurmountable. Um, consider tone and language, focus on the most pressing issue rather than everything at once. And um, teachers will respond to emails within 72 hours. Prim priority for the teachers will be given to student queries about work and learning needs. And we encourage students to reach out to their teachers via email when they are having a challenge. I encourage them to do that first because we always want to try to help students to become more independent. Teachers responding within 72 hours doesn't mean that they're going to wait for 72 hours to respond. It means that sometime within that time period, they will respond to you. Uh, remember that teachers teach 90 plus students um, during the week, and so it may take a little time for them re to respond to your, to your query.
Thank you, Christy. Clearly, our meeting this evening um, emphasizes this point tremendously. Um, you will never run out of things that can go wrong. And in the virtual learning environment, that is 100% the truth, as we noticed this evening. Um, I feel like it's important for us to talk about the fact that these things are going to happen. And they could happen every single day because digital learning is not without its hiccups that are out of our control. Um, and we want to make sure that they don't further disrupt the learning environment more than they already will by their nature. Someone's internet or their power or both is going to go out. Um, and then they're trying to figure out how to hotspot or get on with a phone or what to do. Somebody's screen is going to freeze and then somebody else is going to make fun of how they look because their screen is frozen. Someone's going to try to talk while their microphone is on mute, or they're going to talk when their microphone should be on mute, and they're going to disrupt the class or say something they shouldn't have said out loud. Someone will put something personal or inappropriate in the chat box, and there will inevitably be an audio lag. The teachers are going to address these with the students. They're going to talk about the things that will go wrong and what to do if it happens. Know that we are all well aware that it is going to happen. The same way that we all got kicked out of this meeting at the beginning, we'll tell the kids if something goes wrong and you get kicked out, come back in. Try again. Here's where you look in the Google Classroom for an update if we all get stuck and we can't get back in. Um, most importantly, email your teacher to let them know what happened and to find out what you missed. I know that this is a new thing for our fourth graders being able to use the Google email. They already have their login and password um, and mail is now enabled on their Chromebooks. So they will be able to email their teachers to say, hey, I was in class for five minutes and then my power went out or my internet, you froze and I couldn't hear what was saying. Um, so can you please let me know what I missed? Um, teachers know to look for those emails, so they'll be focusing on those first. Go ahead. We are, uh, inevitably, there will be tech problems. Uh, we are asking all upper campus students to check out and utilize school devices for distance learning. This makes uh, in working troubleshooting much easier for our tech staff. Uh, make sure that you purchase the Chromebook insurance. It's quite a bargain for what you get. And uh, if, you, if, you, if your child has technical issues, uh, they should email Judy, and there's her email there, uh, Jay Lamore at the Globe Academy, to set up an appointment for repair. And uh, in mo a lot of cases, the repair can be done remotely, or you can bring it in, and we can, um, we can make some changes. If it requires an insurance claim, we'll let you know. Uh, and if, if, the, if there is a serious problem with the computer, we'll trade it out. So um, our tech staff is on campus and we can handle those issues uh, very easily. Thank you, Marcia. Before we go on to the next slide, or you can stay there, Christy, it's fine. But um, I just wanted to point out, there seems to be a bit of confusion about Chromebooks. Um, we are asking all families to use our upper campus Chromebooks. I know Marcia said that. I want to reiterate that. There's a reason for that. We're not trying to make you crazy. Um, number of things. First of all, as Marcia indicated, it's easier for us to help troubleshoot and manage if everybody's using the same device. Um, we are also able to push out the filters that we use at school on school devices in your homes. So many of you expressed concerns about kids being distracted or having access to internet and doing other things besides school while they're in school. Using a school device will cut down on that. Um, most importantly, as our kids get older, fourth and fifth grade, and then into the middle school, we are using more summative type assessments, tests and quizzes than you saw in K through three environment. Um, and being on a school device enables us to push out quizzes and tests and the map test in a locked format so that students can't go back and forth from tab to tab and can only address what's on their screen. Um, make sure you've purchased insurance. You do not have to indicate the device uh, serial number or anything on the insurance. Um, we will follow that back up with the company. Nothing to worry about. All right, Christy, you can go on. Thank you. Please set your student up for success. Check the Globe newsletter for an updated school supply list. Many of you asked about whether school supply lists were being updated for distance learning. There are definitely supplies that they do not need while they're learning from home. 
list last week's newsletter has updated lists this week newsletter will repeat them again create a workspace for your student more than one if you have more than one in your house make sure that supplies are nearby make sure that the school chromebook is charged or that you have access to an outlet and the charger is around and please leave food and drink in the kitchen for lunch or breaks in between class periods um, the last thing we want is for the water cup or the cheeto dust to ruin the chromebook I recommend checking the Wi-Fi signal first to make sure that it's working where your student is choosing to work. Um, and second, that it works when everyone in your house is on at the same time. If you have multiple people in your home, as I do, doing school and work from the internet, then you wanna make sure that your Wi-Fi signal is ready to hold up to that so that we don't have kids getting kicked out. If you find that your Wi-Fi signal is not working so great, um, a very quick way to drain or to drain less of your internet when your student is in school is to turn off their camera. They can still see, they can still participate in class, but it drains substantially less of the Wi-Fi with the camera off. However, please make sure that they're letting their teacher know why they're turning it off so that it is not um, causing more distraction. As we would in school, please make a plan for your student's cell phone. If they were coming into the building, we would ask that cell phones be off and out of sight from the entire day, from the time they walk into the building until the time they walk out. So please do the same thing at school, whether that means that you get to hold their cell phone for the day or that it gets placed someplace else where they're, while they are in their classes during regular class times so that that is not causing a distraction. Finally, there's been a lot of question about uniform and appropriate dress. We are not requiring students to be in uniform during digital learning, but we are asking that students be dressed appropriately. Um, there should definitely be consideration to the fact that students are sitting and seen from the waist up on their camera all the time. Um, and we wanna make sure that what they're wearing is not expressing inappropriate logos or revealing their body in ways that, that we do not need to be revealing in a classroom setting. As we've said, this is real school. And even though we are doing it virtually, our teachers have been working really hard um, to learn from uh, the spring and to make this a, a great experience for our students. Uh, we, we are pioneers out there in the woods doing new things. And so uh, we ask for your patience. We don't know how long we'll be learning together in a digital environment, but we don't wanna miss out on any instruction. And we're asking students to treat each day as if it were a normal school day, wake up in the morning, get dressed, eat breakfast, go to class, start work. At 3.10, the day is over, take a break, go outside and play, get some physical ex exercise and activity. We want students to have a mindset of participating in classes, whether it's PE classes or art classes or Spanish classes or whatever. Um, how, how you approach it also makes a huge difference with students. And so we, we feel like this is a partnership. We're all working together as a team and uh, we appreciate your patience uh, through all of this. If you have unanswered questions and put them in the chat box, if we haven't answered them tonight, uh, we'll reach out to you directly or it'll be part of the FAQs that we send along with the video. Um, we are, someone asked about office hours for administrators. We, we do not have office hours set up directly for parents, but if you'll email Judy or me, um, we certainly can make an appointment with you to sit down and, and have an uninterrupted chat. All right. Thank you guys. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to this year. I know that there is anxiety, but I want to reiterate what leadership said is um, our attitude and how we talk about this in front of our children is going to make all the difference in the world. Um, Judy, I see your hand. And so um, I just want to make sure that we, like Marcia said, this is a partnership. We're all in this together. And um, that is going to make a big difference. And we're all the teachers are excited. You've got a great fourth and fifth grade team that are really excited to welcome your students back, in, back into school, even though it's virtually. So, Judy? We have a couple of questions popping up, Christy, that seem to be 
repetitive, so I was just going to answer them. Um, one is related to device pickup. If you're not, it, we really would like to do as much as possible of the device pickup on the 12th and the 13th so that we can make sure we have lots of staff in the building that day to make sure that nothing gets skipped and everybody gets all the materials that they need. They will be getting Chromebooks and chargers and hard copy materials from a lot of their teachers to help them with their distance learning. If you did not pick up your yearbook at the beginning of the summer, your yearbook will be available. Um, so we really encourage you to come in on the 12th or the 13th if possible. If you cannot come in on the 12th or the 13th, then please come in on Monday the 17th or Tuesday the 18th between 9 and 2 and have some patience with George and Pat as they try and manage parents coming in to get their devices. Um, obviously, we would prefer for everyone to have all their material before classes begin on the 19th. Um, so please pick everything up on Monday or Tuesday between 9 and 2. There also seem to be a fair amount of questions about having multiple students in a house and um, what to do about feedback and things like that. If your students are in the same class in the same grade, um, whether it's your children or a pod of children, they when they're live in the class, um, it's okay for them to share one machine. They need to let the teacher know that they're both there and both students need to be present in the screen. Um, but if you have two children from two different grades, I would recommend moving them into separate spaces because if they unmute themselves, there's going to be a lot of feedback from one to the other. Um, they'll get a lot of buzzing and that'll be really uncomfortable for everybody's ears. I, I also noticed that some people said they'd had to step away and they missed some things. Um, Christy it is recording this and it will be pushed out for you to go back and and uh, go through it again. That that should be helpful if you're being distracted. I know how that can be when you have a house full of kids. So we appreciate you all coming tonight and we are really looking forward uh, to this year. Uh, whatever it brings. We think it's going to be a very exciting year and we're, we're, we're really, our teachers are really pumped about getting back and talking to the kids again. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much. And if you have a burning question, just drop it in the chat box and we'll um, get back to you or put it in the FAQ document. So we'll leave it open for a few minutes just so everybody can do that. But we are done. Thank you so much. We'll see you Monday at orientation. Thank you, guys. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Good everybody. Night. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Christy, you want to turn off the screen sharing so we can see who's left? Awesome. I'm going to stop the recording.